<clears throat> made a mistake on the I started streaming in landscape mode or portrait mode, not landscape mode. Now I have to wait for people to join up, which I should have just started streaming. I made the mistake. I screwed up. And now the stream is empty. Okay. So while the stream starts up, I'm going to open up the chat uh, for you guys. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to guess that this is going to stream. Okay. Uh, before we start talking about the overclocking of the screen, I'm going to wait till I have a few more people in here. And I really want to talk briefly about the one plus uh, new headphones that just came out um, and kind of my overall reaction to them because the OnePlus headphones that recently came out, uh, they're having software issues. Like not all of the OnePlus Nord devices that reviewers have have been updated to take advantage of all of the controls that they offer. Um, that's kind of a shitty first experience for the reviewer to not be able to do that. But it seems like just kind of a lot of these Chinese companies in general um, are dragging their feet in regards to giving us uh, software support for headphones. And, and part of that just comes down to the fact that these new OnePlus headphones that came out, by the way, let me know how I sound in the comments. Um, because for OnePlus to rebrand the Oppo and co headphones, whatever the new headphones that they were. Um, it's essentially a, a rebranded version of it uh, and a few lines of code that have to go into, well, a little bit more than that. But, but for, for them to do the software support, um, it's, it's more time intensive, it's more labor intensive. Please make it OnePlus Nord full. I don't know if I'm gonna buy the OnePlus Nord, um, to be honest with you, because I got a feeling in Vietnam it's gonna end up being way more money than I want to spend uh, for a device with worse specs than I want. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to buy it. I'll wait to see if it's available here. But to me, uh, if I'm buying a, if I'm buying a phone and it's not a flagship phone, if I'm buying a, a middle of the road device, um, if I'm having to compromise on price a little bit, I'm willing to compromise on features, but I want to have, you know, depending upon the cost, I want to have one standout feature uh, on that device. And in the case of the OnePlus Nord, it seems like their standout feature uh, for the device is the screen. Um, the camera is not a flagship camera. The OnePlus, it's the same camera as the OnePlus 8. So we know that it's, it's going to be limited. It's not going to be the full flagship experience. Uh, although the IMX586 that's in it, which is the sensor that was in the Redmi K20 Pro, it's a great sensor. With OAS, it should be even better. And with software development, you can get a lot out of that sensor. They're still using the Poco F1 sensor and the Pixel 3 XL, Pixel 4 XL. Yeah, the IMX366. So the sensor is, only part of it. Um, I wanted to now jump into talking about the overclocking of the Poco F2 because that's what everyone is in here for. Now to touch on the overclocking, I've done a bunch of research in regards to what needs to be done to overclock the screen of this device. And right now, uh, the thing holding us back from doing this is a developer. Uh, essentially, in order to overclock the display, we all need, no, a lot of people like me, why, but they want to overclock the screen. In order to overclock the display, we need to be able to modify a .bat, a .bat uh, file, which essentially is the set of parameters that instruct the display to refresh at a specific rate or how quickly the display should be refreshing. Um, anyone that's got a Poco F2 Pro, Redmi K30 Pro, they can export that set of bat files to someone that knows how to modify them. Um, I, and, I'm, and, I, and I'm making this video because if anyone in the development community, if you guys have any developers that you follow on Twitter, know people that can modify that BAT files, uh, what I'm going to end, what do you think? Hold on, right, right, right now, I'm not talking about the Mi 10 Lite. 
um, I'm talking about the overclocking of the display. And I will get to your questions. So if you have questions, um, you can leave them here, but I'm not going to be answering them at this moment. Uh, what I'm going to end up doing later today is um, I'm going to figure out or f try to find a way to go ahead and uh, possibly export my bat files or I'm going to wait till I can hopefully get in contact with the developer and just send them directly to, to him, make sure that I get him all the files that are needed I'll, and I'll ask some of the people that I already know in the development community. But if you guys have a developer, if you have someone in the development community that can modify it, no, it's not the same because, uh, and I'll explain this in a second. Um, the process of overclocking the display uh, for the Redmi K20 Pro, it is the same. The difference is that because these are different devices with different drivers, uh, I cannot use a Redmi K20 Pro bat file um, to on my device. So I need someone to modify the bat file that I have right now and set us a couple of overclocking parameters. Now, uh, someone asked, where's my chat? Okay, someone asked uh, on the subject of this, how many hertz can you overclock it to? Uh, I, in regards to overclocking the display, okay, I think that there's a couple of things that we want to keep in mind uh, as, as kind of responsible cell phone owners. Um, and the first one is that in all of these devices, uh, in testing for the individual components on each device, there is like a margin of error or there's a safety net that we have available. Now, in the case of the screen of the Poco F2 Pro, I'm going to make the assumption, I'm going to guess that in the testing of this panel, this panel is probably within spec, right, or within a, a, a reasonable margin to overclock it to maybe 75 or 78 uh, hertz. Personally, I would probably, I would probably just overclock it to 72 hertz. I don't think I would go for a full 80 hertz just because pushing that spec beyond what like a safe margin would be could end up shortening the display or the life of the display. Along with that, overclocking the display that significantly more uh, can Fiverr websites usually have good developers. If you guys can find a developer that wants to do this, I, I'm, 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 pro I'm not gonna make any money for, for, for doing this. So if you guys wanna raise money somehow to, for a developer to do this, that'd be great. Or for a developer that's unknown, because I'm gonna do lots of videos about this, uh, wants to work with me. Um, for uh, someone that's experienced, doing this would probably take less than an hour, hour and a half, to be honest with you guys, at least from what it's been explained to me what needs to happen. Um, overclocking your display to a full 80 hertz will more likely than not shorten the overall life of the display. I think overclocking it to something like 72 hertz would probably give you a nice bump in, in kind of overall feel, but uh, with like less chance of destroying your display. Okay, um, now that I've explained to you guys what that is, I know some people are, are always going to overclock these displays to like 80 hertz, 100 hertz, like, I, but, but in regards to that, I needed the, the device to, be, to, to work. Okay, now to answer your questions, and if you have more questions, you can leave them. Uh, ASAP ROMs are enough. Um, as we just talked about in yesterday's video, uh, people seem to like MIUI a decent amount. There's MIUI fans. Fiverr websites usually have pretty good developers. I have no experience. If K30 Pro gets released in India, more developers will come. There's lots of great developers in India. I know that. Just ask on XDA. If someone wants to ask, I will make this available. Um, in fact, I will talk to some devs in my Telegram community and ask them um, what steps I need to do to extract these bat files. And then I will host them online on Google and then I will have a link to it on my website uh, asking developers if, if, they're going, if they're going 
to work on this, to DM me or get a hold of me somehow, um, so that we can hopefully speed this up. Why is Xiaomi not releasing the K20 Pro in India? Uh, I, I think India is in a really, really weird predicament right now, although I know the device is supposed to be launching there soon. From my understanding for India, all of the devices they want to bring to India, they need to bring the tooling, they need to bring the manufacturing, they need to bring all of that into India. And they also need to bring engineers and they need to bring people that set up the assembly line of this stuff. And right now with COVID-19, I got a feeling that them setting up manufacturing in India for the Indian market might be slower or it might be taking a longer period of time to get production up to a level where they can begin to sell the devices at quantity in the Indian market. Um, if the case had stereo speakers, it would be the king of budget. Yeah, the only problem with the stereo speakers for the K30 Pro on this is that uh, um, at least depending upon markets, the Xiaomi Mi 10 is really close in price for to the K30 Pro. Um, and it's a huge difference. If the, K, if the K30 Pro only had band N28, Tim, Tim Choi, there's probably uh, the Poco F2 Pro that you will have. The, the only thing missing is I re the K30 Pro is not the perfect, the K30 Pro is definitely not the perfect device. Xiaomi not releasing the device in India, just ask on XDA. Uh, let me see. Okay, if there's any other, also not, then that means for your market, you're gonna end up getting a Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro. That's what that means, unfortunately. Um, because as I did in another video, uh, as I did in another video, Xiaomi is re-releasing the Poco F2 Pro as the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro. Okay, let's go ahead and cap off this video here. I will take any other questions for the last, until we hit the 13 minute mark. So for the last 40 seconds, put your questions in. Do I like the K30 Pro overall? Uh, I do, but I would, I would prefer, I prefer to take some less features for a better camera because I just don't find that the, the power isn't going to use. Mi 10 Lite question. Um, I, the, I, the Mi 10 Lite is a, is a pretty, pretty nice device overall. I would, Yes, the Mi 10T is coming, Mi 10 Lite. Uh, I, I would look for, I'd actually look for a K20 Pro over a Mi 10 Lite, unless you want 5G, or I would look at the Mi Note 10, or I would wait for the Mi Note 11 because of the Xiaomi's track record. It will have the 765G and the Xiaomi Mi 10S cameras. Realme X2 Pro or K20 Pro Premium? I would say I don't like either of those devices. I personally want the best camera I can have in my pocket. I'm still going uh, Mi Note 10 Pro over both of those devices or Mi CC9 Pro just because even in 2020, the camera is still premium. Personally, I am waiting for the 100 watt charging from Xiaomi unless Xiaomi splits their battery cells up it's just throwing more wattage at it and increasing the overall heat of the device and increasing the overall heat of the device in a hot climates ends up with a slow charging battery as I've experimented. And some people wanted to say that experiment was flawed because I used these Basius cables. That's not true because we found out, do I find that we found out that the device charged really fast in the freezer? Mi 10T release date. Well, they released the Mi 9T like th three or four months after the K20 Pro was released. So I'm gonna guess something in that period of time. Do you find 90 Hertz to be a game changer? Uh, to me, 90 Hertz seems like it's just another spec to sell you on a device over another spec. I don't personally find it to give me any more utility. I don't find it to make the experience that transformative. Um, I 
from my interactions using a 90 hertz display, I noticed a bigger change when I went with the high touch sampling rate, uh, the 180 hertz touch sampling rate, because my inputs all of a sudden became faster, more accurate, and more precise, as opposed to just like a more a faster anima a more fluid animation. Um, so I didn't I I found 90 hertz to be like this really cool feature that at a certain period of time you get used to, and then and then there's other things I would rather have. Okay, last questions before we get going here. Where, where, ah, here it is. Is the Mi Note 10 Lite as good as the Pro version? No, the Mi Note 10 is not as good. I believe it doesn't have optical image stabilization. Uh, I have the Mi Note 10 Lite 6120. Uh, the Mi Note series is all about the cameras at that price point. So if you bought the Mi Note 10 Lite, that means that in Xiaomi's speak, that's the best camera that you can find at the $300 price point within the Xiaomi lineup. Uh, yeah, I think that the, I think that the Note versions are great. Okay, 90 hertz, Mi 10T. Okay, this is going to wrap this up. I had an X XS Max before. Yeah, you guys know how I you guys know how I feel about cell phones. And oh wait, I just bought the Mi 10 Lite. How did you guys decide to take it? <coughs> Mi 10 Lite is a totally fine device. Um, I, I like it a lot. In video stabilization, I can't tell the difference. Is there any mistyped? Yeah, OK. This is going to wrap this video up. Um, is there anything else that I want to cover? Ah, one last thing. Um, the Xiaomi, the Mi Air 2 SE, the Mi Air 2 basic headphones, because those are launching globally, we'll probably end up seeing some type of hacked application in XDA to change the controls on this. So that might change. Okay, we're gonna wrap this video up here and uh, share this. Till next time guys, it's been Mitchell. Stay safe, peace.